Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little off script for my channel and building a PC. Uh, normally, you're, if you're new to my channel, you're going to see a lot of DIY build videos. So stay tuned. I'll talk about why 3D printing and PCs go together pretty well and some of the things that I'm considering in this build. considerations when it comes to building or buying a PC. You can go with a pre-built or you can go with a DIY build like I'm doing here. In full disclosure, it has been about eh, six or seven years, I give or take a few years, since I have done a PC build. So I'm a little rusty, but not a whole lot has changed. And if anything, I think PC building has gotten even easier. Okay, here's the board. So you can see everything's pretty much empty at the moment. And I've got some DDR5 RAM here from G-Skill called the Flare X5. I'm going to go ahead and put this memory in, and you're just going to open up slot 1 and slot 2 to insert these. Um, now, there's only one way that you can, these can really go in. Put those one in, and I hear the nice, satisfying click. So I got those in right. You go ahead and insert the CPU. I'm just going to rotate this around so it's a little easier to access. And you want to make note of this little corner arrow here. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. But that corner arrow is going to help us align the CPU. When you're removing it from the package, make sure that you don't touch any of the bottom of this. And you can see the corner arrow here. That's going to align in that corner. And I'm just going to grab it on the sides. Make sure nothing's on the bottom. And then I'm just going to set it in there nice and flush. So make sure it's uh, none of the corners are overhanging. And then you should be able to just pull this down. And it, this, this piece should pop right out once you clip this on. You can also remove it if you don't want to rely on the popping. Okay, there we go. That's all there is to installing the CPU. Well, unfortunately, as I was going to install this, I noticed this corner was kind of bent, and that is not a good sign. So the build's going to be a little delayed. Uh, Amazon is going to be replacing this, and I've got everything kind of <laughs> getting ready to go back. So that's one of the downsides, of course, to a DIY and building from parts, as you might get bad parts and, have, and lose time and have to deal with returns. And next up, I've got this NZXT H7 Flow Case. And I'll just show you the back here. It's got a nice uh, exhaust fan. I like the mesh here. Motherboard area, power supply cut out. It's really nice to have your USB ports up here as well as a headphone jack. This is kind of the bare minimum that I'd want. And I also like it at the top of my case. Some cases they have them at the bottom. This case also has three included fans. And these are nice fans. They're actually the RGB kind. I didn't really care about RGB, but it was included and it was under, I think it was under 150 for this case with the fans. So you got the three in the front and the one in the back. And you should be able to control those with software as well. There's also plenty of room in the top if you wanna put an AIO cooler and fans up here. And this is a modular power supply, which is nice. That just means that all the cables you have, you can kind of pick and choose what you wanna plug in there. They're not all just tied into the power supply. You've got the power supply out along with the cables. And really what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and plug things in that I know that I'm going to need. It's definitely possible to add these cables later as well if you need to, if you forget one, but it's easier to add them all now and then just kind of feed them in. I'm just going to use this ATX one as an example. So the 24 pin ATX, this side's going to go into the motherboard and this side you're going to connect it in and it's really in two spots. So you got your 24 pin right here and that needs to click in and then you've got to kind of Bend this one a little bit to get it to fit down here and these these are only going to fit one way so you really can't screw it up and the rest of these are going to be based on the peripherals or the gpus you have in 
SATA connectors, but just check your GPU to confirm which ones you need. I'm not using any SATA drives. I'm not going to need any of these SATA cables, which is that connector there. It's interesting that they even included this really old school connector here, so definitely not going to need that. All right, to mount this power supply, you'll notice there's an intake fan right here, and there's a little mesh here where the air can come up, the cold air. And unless you're sitting in on carpet, it's probably a good idea to install this like such. So I'm going to go ahead and get that lined up. And here it is lined up and you can see the holes that we're going to use. They may be different depending on the position that you put this in. This piece here can be a bit of a gotcha. Make sure you install this in your case before you set your motherboard in. Okay, I've gone ahead and snapped this in and I snapped it in from the inside of the case. You can see that there's little tabs that kind of form fit in there and clip in. So it should snap into place and maybe a little fiddly to get it set up. And you can see these little tabs here on some of these cutouts and those are gonna stick right into the motherboard so it shouldn't go anywhere. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and install the motherboard. I'm going to pull it towards me to lock into that clip and then there's a center pin here in the case that's going to align to that. Everything looks good. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the screws in. The key here is just making sure this is aligned. You can kind of eyeball that your screw holes are lined up to the standoffs. I'm gonna start in the middle. It doesn't really matter where you start as long as you get them all in there. There shouldn't be any, any wiggle. I've got all the screws in now. We're bolted down. We don't want a whole lot of bent. We don't want things to easily flex. And just go through and just finger tight. Don't over tighten. Next up, I'm going to be installing this Peerless Assassin heatsink for air cooling. And I'm first going to dry fit everything and get it assembled before I put the thermal paste on the CPU and connect it in. So as you can see, um, there's going to need to be some adapters that I have to install. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've got to remove what's there, these black brackets, and then I'm going to be installing the AMD 5 adapter. And this does come with different uh, standoffs for adapters. AM5, 1700, and 115X, 1200. I'm gonna use the AM4, AM5. In order to install these, I'm gonna place these pink standoffs here. And these brackets are going to just mount on top like that. And they're going to be where you can read the AM4. They're gonna kind of bend towards the CPU, just like that. And now we're going to take the screws that were included and just going to go ahead and sink those in. Okay, nice and tight. And those are all in. Do a little close up there. Okay, next up, I'm just gonna dry fit this. I still need to finish installing the heat sink, but I wanna make sure everything is lining up and setting in place like it should. And it does look like it will be. Yeah. So we're gonna, we should have plenty of room here. We, I do still need to mount the fans, but even with the fans on, I'm not worried about anything getting in the way of the, of the top of the case, the glass, or hitting the components on the board. I'm at the point now where I can apply the thermal paste and kind of prep everything. I've got this Noctua NTH1 3.5 SW Edition. I like Noctua paste. You can probably use a cheaper paste or even the paste that is included. Before applying, I'm going to go ahead and remove this wipe here. And you can use this wipe on both the CPU as well as the cooler. Some people will just use isopropyl alcohol, pretty much what this is. Make sure you get it real good. I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. And I'll go ahead and wipe this as well. It should be clean, but you never know. And to apply this paste, you're going to have a spreader. And of course the tube. So the first thing you need to do is take this out. I'm going to just start with a little dab in the middle. That's probably about right. And now I'm going to take my spreader and just kind of evenly spread a real thin film on this. I don't want to go crazy with it. And if you happen to get a little too much on there, just dab it off. You might want to use a Q-tip or something or a even a paper towel, just don't touch it with your hands. You don't really want to see any metal showing through. So if you do, just put a little more on there. I also don't like to have stuff hanging over the edges. So you can either remove it with your spreader or you can get a little Q-tip and use that. That's probably an easier way to do it. This is looking pretty good. And next up, I'm just gonna go ahead 
and install this. So I'm gonna install it in this orientation. Remember, remove this piece here, this plastic, and make sure that this is cleaned off and dried. So I should be okay there. These are gonna just line up right over these screws like that. And now I need to tighten them down. And you do want to get that down nice and tight. Okay, I'm starting to feel low resistance. Once you feel low resistance, you can, you're pretty much done. A little bit more. Okay. In order to do the next part, you're going to need this Y connector, which is going to allow you to run both your fans in parallel and connect uh, to the CPU connection. And you're also going to need these clips, to, which will allow you to clip the fans to the cooler. When mounting the fans, keep in mind where your CPU connector is going to be. Mine is right here, um, so I need to be able to reach that. So with that in mind, I'm going to just make sure the wire is go going out that side. The other thing you need to be aware of is this is going to draw air into it, and we want it all going towards the exhaust. So make sure that as we mount the fan, one here and one here, that the label is facing this direction. And the clips are going to go in like this, and then I'm going to go ahead and mount this in the middle one. Just let it go pretty much where it's on the top. And then that should just snap right in like that. There we go. There, that one's all in. And then I'll just repeat for the front. We've got it mounted the exact same way. The logo outside. And same thing for the side. I take my cables here. And these only should be able to fit in one way. And just go ahead and put them in. And there's two. And now we can go ahead and connect this to the CPU pin. And my CPU fan, I've rotated the case so you can see a little better. It's pretty hard to see and get to. Looks good. And then these we can just leave there or we can zip tie them. But we'll worry about cable management in a little bit. Okay, you may notice a few differences here. I went ahead and swapped out the motherboard because two of the MSI boards that I had were both bad. And I could not get it to post. So, uh, long story short, I've got it swapped out now. I've got my NVMe drives installed. I've pretty much got everything connected except for the GPU at this point. I'm going to try and pick up where I left off. I'm going to go ahead and remove the stickers. And you don't want to remove the sticker on your NVMe. Just leave those on there because those are metallic. I'm going to just set that on there, and I should be able to just line it up and screw it in. Yeah, that seems pretty good. This is the cable that you're going to need to use for the 4080. So you take four of these PCIe connectors, and you basically are going to connect them. It should only go in one way. So you'll go ahead and connect them in like that. And you really do need three of them, and you don't want to use the pigtail end. These are going to go into the card. But before we get all that wired up, I'm going to go ahead and remove my couple of my slots. It came with one of these, which is a support, so that's pretty nice. And that's also going to go into um, the slot over here, and that's going to help hold the card up. And here's the card. This thing is really a beast. It weighs a lot, too. I'm going to rotate it around here. And before you put it in the slot, you'll need to remove this piece right here. There we go. Locked right in. And now we can go ahead and install the anti-sag. This is just going to sit like this. And you can... Just pull out these screws to, and then screw in on top of it. Okay, and everything is now installed. I'm not sure exactly how effective this is going to be, but we'll give it a go. And now I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. I'll make sure it's nice and secure. There we go. I heard it click. Okay, after finagling a little bit, I was able to get all three wired in and connected. You can kind of see how I brought it through. 
Now we're going to go ahead and plug it in and give it a shot. I was able to get everything up and running, including installing Windows 11 as well as the drivers. There were a few surprises along the way, mainly the motherboards. The trade-off between building versus buying a pre-built is pretty much time and cost. You're going to definitely save time by buying a pre-built, but you're probably not going to get the best components. I priced out all the components individually. With my build, I was able to save around five to six hundred dollars. But I really do believe with the defective motherboards that I got, with um, some of the troubleshooting time that I spent, I certainly could have saved time over money. But I will say it was an enjoyable build for me for the most part. I'm very excited to use this PC for some of my future content. I'm already playing around with AI. Uh, obviously gaming is going to be something. And then of course uh, 3D printing. I do plan on installing all the 3D printing software that I want to use and get up to speed with that. This is a fairly high-end model. I spent around $2,500 on it. And you can see all of the parts in PC Part Picker uh, in the link in the description. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you'd like to see future content more in the PC area and how I'm using it, maybe for content, uh, once I get into AI, please drop me a note. Thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner.